All right, let's take a look at function arithmetic. What function arithmetic means is literally doing arithmetic with functions. Those basic operations of adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, instead of doing those to numbers, now we're going to do them to actual functions. If we have that f of x is 2x plus 3 and g of x is 3x minus 5, when we want to find f plus g, that means to take the function f of x, which we have here is 2x plus 3, and add it to g of x, which is the 3x minus 5. Of course, you should simplify that into 5x minus 2. Now, if we're thinking about the domain of f and g and all of these things, uh, we look back to the originals, and for the function f of x, the domain there was all real numbers. I'm going to write that over here. d of f, domain of f, was all real numbers. And g of x, that's linear as well, so its domain is also all real numbers. So when it comes to the sum of these two functions, well, each piece had a domain that was all real numbers, so uh, no surprise here that the domain of f plus g will also be all real numbers. When we're looking at the product of f and g, uh, that means that we're going to use the function f as one factor and g as the other factor. Thinking about domains again real quickly before we finish it up, um, again, we see that there's nothing in the first factor to exclude any part of the real numbers. And it's the same thing with the second factor as well. So the domain of f times g is going to be all real numbers. But since we're multiplying two binomials together, it's um, simple enough to just foil it out. We'll get 6x squared. Let's see, uh, minus 10 and plus 9 makes minus 1x and minus 15. Now that we're dealing with division, we should always be a little leery of it. Uh, but f over g means take the function f, 2x plus 3, and put it over 3x minus 5. There's nothing we can do to really simplify that out, but what's more interesting here is now we have a domain that is not all real numbers because we have to worry about a denominator. Now that we have a fraction, a rational function, with this denominator can't equal 0 since 3x minus 5 cannot equal 0. That means x cannot equal 5 thirds, and that would be the domain of f over g. All right, that last one was fairly tame. Let's try something that's a little more interesting. Like when we have two rational functions that we want to deal with. Uh, since h and k are both rational, let's take a look at h and its domain. Um, since it's a rational function, its denominator can't equal 0. x minus 1 can't be 0, which means x cannot be 1. Similarly for k, its denominator can't equal 0 either. So now to find the difference of these two, I'm just going to take h of x and subtract k of x, the x plus 1 over x. Got two fractions I'm trying to subtract, so I'm going to need a common denominator. The two factors in my denominator are going to be x and x minus 1, which means this x plus 1 from the first fraction still needs to get multiplied by x over x, and this x plus 1 from the second fraction, it needs to get multiplied by x minus 1 over x minus 1. It's pretty messy right this second, so let's expand it, see what we get, x squared minus plus x minus uh, x plus 1 times x minus 1, that's the difference of two squares still have my denominator around. So I'm going to write that every time. Don't get lazy and not do that. Um, to simplify the numerator, I do see that I have this x squared, and I'm going to subtract another x squared, and the fraction simplifies to x plus 1 over x times x minus 1. And I'm cool if you leave it factored like that. If you wanted to multiply out the denominator, that's fine. But what we can tell by looking at it in this form that is that the domain of h minus k. Again, we have another rational expression. Its denominator can't equal 0. 
So x times x minus 1 can't equal 0, which means x can't be 0 and x can't be 1, which when we look back up at the top, that's what our two domains were before. So now that I'm taking the difference of two functions, I'm taking their domains with them. Let's see what happens when we multiply these two functions together. So I'll take that first fraction and multiply by the second one. Now when we multiply these out, x plus 1 times x plus 1, we'll leave it as x plus 1 squared. And our denominator, as we multiply across, is x times x minus 1. We don't have any factors that are canceling or anything like that. But when we take a look at the domain, again, we see that we have our uh, two pieces that came, one of them came from H, one of them came from K, and that is that X can't equal 0, and X can't equal 1. But now let's look at uh, H divided by K. When we set it up, I'll have H in the numerator, and then K in the denominator. So as far as the domain goes, I'm going to have to take the domains of h and k with me because in my numerator I have a fraction and I don't want this denominator to equal 0, so x can't equal 1. And in the denominator I have another fraction and I don't want this denominator to equal 0. So that means that x can't equal 0, and those were those two domains from h and k. However, we got something extra now because we're setting up another fraction that means that this entire fraction down here is a third denominator that I have to worry about. So, x plus 1 over x can also not equal 0. Well, the only thing that uh, is going to make a fraction equal 0 is the numerator. And that would mean that x can't equal negative 1. So, included in my domain of h over k are the two domains of h and k themselves plus that one extra piece that would have made k, the denominator, equal to 0. Anyway, we still have to go back and finish up simplifying this complex fraction. So I'm going to leave the numerator as x plus 1 over x minus 1. Instead, dividing by the second fraction, I'm going to multiply by its reciprocal. Then my x plus 1s are going to cancel and it leaves us with x over x minus 1. Now you might be looking at this result and saying, hey, wait a second, why do we have to worry about all those different exclusions to the domain that x can't be 1 or negative 1 or 0? Because when I look at this last fraction, uh, I would think that the, the domain is just that x cannot equal 1. I don't have to worry about it equals 0. I can put 0 in the numerator, and I don't have to worry about negative 1. I can put negative 1 into this fraction. And that would be true if maybe this rational function was originally defined as f of x or some other function, but it's not. This is not f of x. This is h over k. It's two functions being divided by each other. So that means we have to respect each of those functions individually, and each of those have an exclusion to their domain, plus we have to worry about k of x equaling 0. So there's a little more that we have to think about when we're dealing with that um, h divided by k, or a function divided by another function.